every facet of this, uh, Phil and I were always asking, like, what's the thing that we can do in this movie because it's Spider-Man uh, that we couldn't get away with in another movie? Uh, and right from the very beginning, the idea of having the movie feel like a comic book come to life where any frame, if you paused it, could be a still painting of a comic book was was the goal and the thinking was there's all this amazing concept art that gets done for every movie and then when you see the finished movie sometimes it doesn't have that artist's hand on it in the way that that the concept art did and so we thought why don't we just try to make it look like the concept art and have the concept art be comics influenced when you're reading a comic book you're reading some something that somebody sat down and drew with the intention that one person at a time is gonna be reading this. We kinda of wanted to see if we could get as close as that as we could in the making of Spider-Verse. So uh, the animation style, gigantic part of that. And uh, like something as simple as uh, the way our characters are modeled in 3D. We tried to model them so that the light would hit them and create shadows the way that a comic book artist would draw shadows in a comic book with ink. Our biggest challenge when it came to animation probably was uh, the decision to try and uh, animate this on twos rather than ones, which basically is half as many poses as you would use as in a typical CG animation movie, which has perfectly fluid, you know, super soft movement. When you're animating on twos, that's what they used to do in the 60s Disney films, you know, 101 Dalmatians or The Jungle Book. It's snappier, it's poppier, it's more, it's inherently more graphic because you have, you're rendering motion in a different way. Uh, it's, it's a really subtle, uh, you know, sometimes not so subtle effect that I think gives the film a, a huge part of its visual identity. I remember one of our animators asked our core team, could we do something like that? Could we have the skipped frames and the, the core team was able to pull something together and it came off really genuine. So when that trailer dropped and fans saw, oh, it's not going on every frame, it's skipping frames. It has this look that the Spider-Verse has and having the onomatopoeia is when he's punching someone with the thwips and the bams, like that just, it just helped elevate the game to another, to another level. And also in a way seeing things that you haven't seen before, just like with the art style from the movie of being able to pause it and having it look like a comic book at any frame. For us, it felt like, how could we make this game feel like something you haven't played before? What have you seen from all the Spider-Man games before? What is something that we haven't seen that we can introduce in Miles that feels core to his character and feels new to the player? So going down, going down different avenues of that and figuring it out definitely set it apart. Yeah, I have to say there were a lot of things that you would have thought would have been hard to get past the bosses that were not nearly as hard as you would think. That the main decision point was just the filmmakers kind of deciding, why don't we do it like this? And then it was very few people got in the way, I gotta say. Most people were just excited. <laughs> you guys made the way Miles moved and the way that everything around him sound feel rich in a way that just isn't possible on the page. So a little bit jealous, but. And then in the game, there's nothing like, you know, some of the best writing right now, I think, um, in genres happening in video games. And there's nothing like a video game, um, except maybe a novel, uh, for making you get in the head of a character, and making you feel like you're associating with that character. The myth, right, because superheroes are our modern myths, and the myth gets built across these different media. And, uh, and it's not really, complete until uh, until we've all kind of had our say in our own our own genres. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, my recollection of these moments are, you can try to plan it the best you can. You can you can put all the preparation you, you can muster into a game like this or a story like this in the film context, but it's those emergent moments that come from your team. Like a cat in a backpack for us was one of those things that we never had on paper, right? And then now Spider-Man the cat is a big thing because a developer said, hey, can I travel around with the cat in the backpack and can I put a little Spider-Man mask on his face? And we're like, you better do that, right? It's like, please do that. It was definitely part of the insomniac spirit for sure is the great ideas come from anywhere. So um, 
So yeah, just that's, that's what gets me excited about the endeavor is you don't have all the answers when you start, but you, you hope and you trust that you'll get there at the end when you lean on the people around you. Yeah, because when I remember when that first started coming coming about, it's like, oh, are you gonna be able to swing with the cat? And it's like, oh, that's the thing now. That's scary. How do how do we do this? How do we make this cat feel believable as he's swinging around? Um, and learn, learning to like, it's okay to be afraid, but don't let that fear stop you. You know, things are gonna come up, things are gonna change, but don't let that stop you from uh, trying to go after greatness and trying to achieve achieve these things. I think I've, I've talked a little bit about how inspiring it was to, you know, be working with uh, with these guys and how uh, how their pursuit of ex excellence is uh, it's infectious. You know, it makes you want to push for your very best. You know, even when you're sitting in a, the the mix room at three o'clock in the morning, Phil, uh, <laughs> you you're still like. It can be better. I mean, it's in reach. I see how it can be better. I can't turn away from it. I'm trying to carry that torch myself and bring that to the things that I do. I have, I have one question for you guys, if you don't mind. Yeah. Where did no expectations come from in the film? You know, I think we initially wanted Miles to kind of be resistant to the, the, the pressure of potential a lot of language in the in the screenplay about that that he has so much potential and that that is um, when the movie starts he wonders whether that's too burdensome you know and then the movie he actually goes you know d down to try to undo his spider bite right he's like I don't want this what was your takeaway as a viewer when you set expectations you're you can be let down or you cannot live up to it yourself when you expect yourself to do these things, but when you just try to genuinely be yourself, that's when you find out, that's when you do your best work a lot of times. When you're just trying to like live in the moment and you're doing, your, you're doing the best that you can. So that's kind of what I've got from it was him saying like, regardless of what the old Peter, what the old Spider-Man had done and regardless of who my parents are, I got to find a way to be myself. And that was my takeaway from, from No Expectations, so. I mean, you just, you spend a lot of time in these jobs wondering if you're good enough to do them. And I think that is mostly a waste of time <laughs> because you're not good enough to do it until you've already done it. <laughs> so you might as well get started. I'm really moved by the work you guys did. I don't need to tell gamers that um, what a, what game playing does for people's empathy is uh, is really powerful and when you apply it to something like the thing you guys made um, it, it, it really moves me <laughs> so good on you and thank you for for that work thanks and thanks for inspiring us with your film yes thanks, thank you guys, guys. You, thank you so much guys. for a great inspiration. be good we'll see you soon